Tonight is November the 5th, 2019. <clears throat> I have a something I've been thinking about for the last day or so is it would be really good to document the real voltage drop across a bunch of different rectifiers. Okay? Like a 5U4. Uh, let me show you what I've got out here. Got a 5U4, got a 5V4, a 5R, 5AR4, or GZ34, whatever you want to call it, a little, pretty little 5Y3, and then just to throw something, a kink in there, this 5V3. It's a higher current version of the 5U4. Uh, the 5 u 4 takes 3 amps to light the filament. This takes 3.8. I don't know if it would be a totally safe replacement or not. I guess if you're using mil-spec transformers and stuff like that, it probably would. But anyway, and then, of course, the solid state. It's pretty significant. I have not done this yet, but I have made, you know, some cursory measurements at different times. And I'm going to show you what happens. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to put this in in writing. We're going to measure these things under really full load. See, I've got the rectifier. Got a solid state, 5U4, V4, 5AR5, V3, and the 5Y3. I'm going to always main the input volt, uh, maintain the input voltage at 120 volts. How you see coming into it, I'm going to measure the voltage at no load, the voltage at clipping, and the power output in each one of these. I think, I think it's going to be really interesting. Now, what I did with this amplifier, you've seen this amplifier before. Let me move the camera here. I know that bothers some of y'all for me to move it around. Don't want to make you dizzy here. But um, it did have this driver board in there. And it worked pretty good, but what I did, I just cut a piece of aluminum, as you can see, and I hand built the uh, um, Williamson driver circuit, driving a pair of really nice uh, Telefunken they're actually made by Electroharmonics or somebody, but they perform really, really well. Kind of pricey. I've had them some time. But anyway, 6550s or KT88s. I guess we call them KT88s. So we got the Williamson circuit driving the KT88s. Earlier I had uh, this one driving the, um, whatever I was driving, EL34s. So what I was driving. Doesn't really matter. This is where we are now. It, this, this, otherwise, it's the same circuit, pretty much. I'll show you underneath it. It is turned on. I have to be very careful. I can set it up on this side. As long as I manage it from one side like that, it turned out. It turned out real pretty under there. Okay, let's see if I can get all hung up there. Um, let me take the camera off. I don't think there's really anything that much different. Uh, maybe just a couple of notes. Well, one thing is, is I found out that on the output, uh, it is turned on, so I have to be careful here. Uh, on the output of the uh, bias, I found out that you really don't want a big honking uh, capacitor right there because it takes it forever to charge up. This is a, uh, I think, a two microfarad. Uh, really, nothing else is different. Here's the uh, Williamson circuit up here. It's a little uh, crowded in there, but that's what it is. And uh, everything else is the same. Yeah, nothing else really got changed. Nothing at all that I can think of. Okay, well, let's start making some measurements. And uh, let me put the camera back on the tripod, and, and we'll, uh, we'll start with the one that's in there now, the solid-state rectifier. Actually, I'm going to have to hold the camera for all this because I gotta, I gotta show you so many things each time. I've got the, uh, we're measuring the voltage right across, right at the, the power supply point that feeds the center tap of the uh, power transform, or the output transform. Excuse me, and we're going to write that down as 567. No load voltage. See, 567. And then, you're going to like this. This thing will put out a lot of power. Okay, we'll run it up until we get some, some clipping. 
and then we'll lower it just a little bit. You can see it start to clip the top and the bottom. We'll run it down and we'll look over here and there's our 77 watts oh, right at 1%. That's kind of nice. Uh, and that uh, 40 hertz. No, I didn't want to bid it at 40 hertz. What am I doing here? I should have set this up. Well, let's go over here to a kilohertz. Let's do it all at a kilohertz. Not that it's that terribly important, but uh, let's do auto set on this guy. There we go. Let's stretch it out one more time. Okay. That looks pretty good. There it is right there. 76 watts. At, uh, right at 1%. If we lower it just even a tiny bit, the, the distortion goes down significantly. And our input voltage is right now at 100 and, uh, 119. Let's raise that to 1 volt. There we go. 120. Everything, we got to keep everything the same. 120 volts. And our voltage now is 50. We'll round that up to 506. 506. So you can see we dropped 60 volts even with the solid state rectifiers, and our clipping power is uh, 76 watts. Okay. Now I'm going to have to stop the camera each time, and then I'm going to put in the 5U4, and we're going to do this again. We'll do it for all the tubes one at a time. So it'll go pretty fast now. Okay, now we've got the 5U4 in there. And our uh, plate voltage is 542. That'll round up to that 542. So a while ago it was uh, 567. That's 542. Let's see what our voltage is at, at clipping and our power. This is all at a kilohertz. Let's see now. Let's. This is the one we got to watch. Sorry for all the movement, but I just don't know any other way to do it. It's doing okay. See, it's starting right there. About the same. 50. Call it 59 watts. The THD is a little bit higher. 59 watts. Power clipping 59. Now that went down significantly, didn't didn't it? And here's our voltage under load, 454. 454. I think you can see where this is going, huh? This is real. And our input voltage is still 120. Gotta get the camera. There we go. Okay. That's that. Let's do another one. Let's do the uh, 5V4 or 5AR4. Which one's next? 5V4. Okay, the next one up is the 5V4. I'm giving everything plenty of time to warm up each time. And our, our voltage now is um, 550. So we're right down 550 here. And then we'll run it up to clipping. That's better, huh? 63 watts. 63 at 1%. Our input voltage is still 120. So we got 63 watts now. Sixty-three and our voltage dropped to uh, four seventy-two. Or five seventy four seventy two four seventy-two. Look at that data so far. Okay, now let's do the 5AR4. Okay, the 5AR4. Look at that. That thing's almost up to the solid state level. Let's just see how it loads down. See, that is the 5AR4 in there. Pretty impressive. Um, of course, I've lost my pencil now. Darn. There it is. Okay, it's... Um, 561, 561, and our voltage at clipping, I 
like it's, oops, sorry. A little clipping there, 561. 69. 69 watts. And about 1.1, 1 1.2 again. So we're reaching that same point each time. 68.9, we'll call it 69 watts. 69 watts, actually it's doing pretty good. 69, and our voltage is... Uh, 487. 487. I mean, I'm just looking at the power level over here. 76, 59, 63, 69. Okay, let's do the 5V3. I'm curious what that one will do. That's the higher current one. Okay, now we've got the 5V3 in there. That's the higher current version of the 5U4 with that 3.6 amp filament. It looks like our voltage is 549. 549. And, well, that's, we got to measure it under load. Okay. Slowly here. Let's look at this. Whoa, right, right, right there. Not too bad. Call it 62 watts. Same THD, 62 watts, 62, and our voltage dropped there, dropped to uh, 5, uh, uh, excuse me, 466, 466, okay, well we've only got one more to go, that poor little 5Y3, I hope we don't smoke it, it's a, it's a pretty little thing, a Jan 5Y3G WGTA. Holy mackerel! Well, let's see if uh, let's hopefully hopefully we won't we won't damage it. Okay, we're gonna abuse the little 5Y3 here and uh, <laughs> see what this poor little thing can do. Okay, our no load voltage is uh, 530 533. 533 and our voltage at clipping. Let's get it up to clipping here. Oh, that's looking like they're pretty good. Well, not exactly. Uh, 49 watts. THC's up pretty high, 2.5%. But we're still at clipping. 49, 49 watts. 49 watts. I bet the voltage is going to be the lowest of all. Yeah, see, it's, it's dropped to 419.7, 419, 420, whatever. 419. So there you go. There's real data. No baloney data. But we go from 76, you know, the next one is the 5AR4. I don't think that's surprising. 5V3 did pretty good. We're, I'm pretty sure we're exceeding the uh, actual uh, current rating of these guys. I know we're grossly exceeding this one. But uh, the 5AR4 and then the 5V4. 5V, yeah, the 5V3, look at there. So you get out did the 5U4, 62 watts to 59. I mean, it's not a, gro it's not a monstrous difference, but it, it is different. So, that's real data the way I look at it. Okay, let me do this. I'm going to unplug it because I want to show you some other things in my digging around. Look what I found. Some 816s. I love these mercury vapor rectifiers. 816. Uh, they're only rated at 125 milliamps per tube, but they're 2.5 volts at 2 amps. So the current is so low that I don't have any, I have one two and a half volt 10 amp transformer, that's all I have. But anyway, they're two and a half volts at, at two amps, so you can put them in series. I've done this, just works perfectly. Just wire them in series so you'd have five volts at two amps. So you can light a pair of these up with the winding for a five Y3. And certainly a 5U4, 5U4 is three amps. So uh, these are going to be in my next amplifier. I hope they work. I, I assume they're all good. At least I got four of them. 
<clears throat> I've got a lot of 866s, but they're they're big guys, you know. And I think they're rated at 500 milliamps per tube, so you know they'll hold quite. They'll hold uh, some pretty heavy duty stuff. But five volts at two amps is all it takes is to light a pair of these guys, and uh, I think they're going to look real nice. You can see the mercury in them right there. Okay, well I think that's it. Uh, let me set the amplifier down and uh, and think see if there's anything else. So our voltage is bled down to uh, four volts. Well, there's just absolutely no denying that uh, the solid state rectifier over there does the job. Not only does it do the 75 to 76 watts uh, with no clipping there, really pretty. The THD is down that low too, 0.6, and you saw what it was at 40 hertz a while ago too. Now it actually performs very well. Uh, I actually like listening to this amplifier. I think it drives the nails out of the wall. It's one of the more powerful uh, amps I have ever built. Uh, using the uh, uh, receiving uh, class tube, you know, not going to a transmitter level tube. <clears throat> 75 watts out of a pair of uh, 6550 KTAs is uh, pretty reasonable. And I'm using, of course, the old vintage uh, 6SN7s. I got the digging around. It looks like I got about 20 of them up there in the attic. I need to. Uh, measuring each one and categorize them, but uh, back to the data sheet one more time. Uh, the no load voltage, 567, 542, 550, 561. I mean, that's pretty close, 549, 533. Yeah, the, the 5AR4 and the solid state rectifiers are, are just about it. The difference is only uh, seven watts. So there you go, for what it's worth. I love knowing this stuff and and uh, I enjoy posting it showing you that I actually did measure it you saw it measured so you can take that for what you think it's worth but I'm just really excited if I had room in this sound fire, which I don't because I just looked I would actually go ahead and put a pair of these in but uh, that will be in the next time so uh, thanks for watching and stay safe well as usual there's often one more thing um, <clears throat> Sometimes I get a lot of requests from lots of different videos of where do I get my parts. Well, I buy most of my stuff like this from um, uh, from Mouser, www.mouser, M-O-U-S-E-R.com. And I got tired of looking on eBay and finding all these, who knows, junk uh, uh, chokes. And you can buy brand new ones for less than you can buy them on eBay. Look at this one, one and a half Henry. 500 milliamps. Now I know one and a half Henry may not make you real happy, but a 10 Henry 500 milliamp choke is a big honker, and it doesn't take that much inductance. One and a half Henry at 500 milliamp. The 500 milliamps is what I wanted, so I bought a couple of those. Here's some 300 milliamp ones. This is one Henry. Uh, in an amplifier I have built with the uh, Macintosh schematic for the MA230, I use one in there that's about a half Henry, I believe, at like. 250 300 milliamps I don't remember the exact and it and you know I have a signal to noise ratio close to minus 90 DB so don't get stuck on having to have a 10 Henry choke you don't need it but you do need one that that's big enough you, you do need one that's got the, the current rating 300 milliamps 500 milliamps I've got an amplifier that I've shown here I showed it in like seven different uh, videos on it in the stages of building it with some Acrosound transformers and um, I have 150, uh, well actually it's, it's the same one that's in here. This one in here is 150 uh, milliamps and if you really rate them, if you really run them at more than their rate, they get pretty darn hot. So it is good to run them at, uh, it is good to have power supply chokes that are big enough. But I wanted to show those parts and, and mention again where I, I get most of them. I don't remember the price of them. I think they were like 27 bucks or something. So by the time you get shipping, they're like 30 bucks. I don't think they were actually that much each. Anyway, I think that's better than buying a bunch of unknowns off of eBay, my personal opinion. Stay safe.